Well, you know, I think I have told you we I was we were training. We were going to shift to an HU-16 from the P5M to the HU-16, and we were training people to fly it. And I was just on the flight training Larry Kinbaum. He, he was in the right seat. I mean, in the left seat. He was making landings at at, at the uh, Air Force Base at the uh, McKinley. Was it McKinley? Yeah. I think it was McKinley in, in, in Bermuda. And, and, and we were doing landings there. And we were in the pattern. And we were downwind. And we had an engine fire. And then he wanted to know if I wanted him if I wanted to take control of the airplane, I said, no, no, no. I want you to control the airplane. I want you to land the airplane. I want to put the fire out. It was a starboard engine that caught fire. We did an indi fire indication. That's what we had. So I, you know, I. What do you do? You just turn off the fuel? Can you well, you, you shut the fuel off and you shut the engine down and you feather the prop and, and fire a fire taster. And it, and it went, it, it put the fire out. I've, I don't even remember how, how badly it damaged anything. Could you, could you start that engine again? No, no, no. no. We Once just landed with a single engine. And that's when you had to, you had a lot of speed on the airplane to land. You're landing at 75, 70, 75 miles per hour. Maybe a little, we ran a little faster that day because we didn't have another engine to come back with, you know. We had an engine, but... We, but we didn't want to have to push, put a lot of power on that engine. And they had plenty of runway there. They had lots of runway. I mean, McKinley, we could have landed that airplane about two or three times there. But, but anyway, we landed, and I just said, make sure that, well, we got, we got momentum, and we got the brakes to control, just break one on one side and pull off into one of the, they've got little places to run off the right. engine, right. the runway. So, um, but then did that did that plane have to be repaired there before oh, yeah. you could fly it back? Yeah, they, no, we couldn't fly it back. They had to change the engine there. Right. We we just twenty miles away. Twenty miles away. They yeah. Just got another engine on a on a truck and put it and and all the things they needed and went over there. And so that was a uh, uh, you guys were just doing touch and goes or just landing? Yeah, and just landing. Off? Yeah, just landing. Just landing. We, I don't know whether we were doing touch and goes. We were probably doing touch and goes because I wanted to get him as many. Landing as I could. Right. I, he, I, he wasn't concerned about taking controls. He's just asking you if you yeah, want. That's right. To. A lot of pipe pilots do. There's an emergency. They just take control of the airplane. We were at altitude. We we could make the field. With, we could shut both engines down and make the field. I mean, if we just turned right into it right now. I mean, you could just land. If we had to, we just shut the power up. You just glide. <laughs> oh, yeah. You glide in. You're... You're, you got altitude, you use the altitude for airspeed, see? You just head yeah. down, and that just glides. It'll land like a rock. <laughs> it's not, it, but it, when you add altitude, you've got, you keep enough uh, airspeed over the wings, you're going to have enough lift to fly, see? And that means just keep the, keep uh, your airspeed up. Don't get it to stall. If you get it to stall, it's going to drop like a rock. Because it was a twin-engine airplane, and it, if it didn't have the engines going, it had a lot of weight on there. It had big wings, and you could just glide. Had you ever had an engine fire incident before? You know, I don't know if I ever did. I'm, try, I'm trying to, we used to shut engines down and start them again to just practice that, you know. I've had engines quit on me because... We would be trying to save fuel. You would actually operate out one engine out of a tank until it it goes dry. Instead of leaving ten or fifteen gallons in the tank that you could really use, we'd just fly on that that tank until it ran out of fuel. Then there's no wasted fuel left in there. Particularly if you're going to be run short at the end. You don't want to leave 15 gallons here, 15 gallons here, 15 gallons here, 15 gallons here. That's 60 gallons you could use somewhere else, you know. So we used to let engines go stop. Then we'd shift to another tank, start the engine again. Uh, you didn't have to go the manual as to how to put out the fire and stuff. No, 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 no. That's why you'd read this emergency manual every month. You know, you know how to do that. 
you just do it automatically. I don't know how to do it today, but in those days I did know how to do it. But I used to read. You were, they used to say you'd be the sharpest pilot if you read the emergency section in the, in the handbook every month. I used to do that pretty regularly. That made me feel very secure in the airplane. If, if I was going to have an emergency, I wouldn't go, well, I wonder what it said on page 13. That wasn't the way I flew the airplane.